guys. If you turn something on, make sure you know to turn it off or how to turn it off. Right, Kyle? There's So, this week we will be talking about our roof race. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> so, why we did a roof race, I guess we can do that question first. Um, so, we did a roof race because I am an average height of six foot. So, at You're six foot two. <laughs> whatever. At this, at, like, with the regular height of the bus. I was walking around like this, <laughs> trying to not hit my head on the ceiling. So Nivia has no issue on that side because she is 4'9". So yay. Uh, no, yeah. So we decided to race it because of my height and I needed some room to not be <laughs> doing this or the whole time. Or hit his head all the time. Or hit my head on things. And also, we wanted to put an insulation on the ceiling, so that would have taken even more off of, uh, off of the ceiling height. Um, and it's just nice to have more space. Yeah, it also makes, yeah, have. it makes the bus look much bigger. Like, it, it looks like a full apartment kind of thing. Like, it's, it's nice. Well, it doesn't right now, but it will. Yeah, but like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so we that's basically yeah, that's the only reason we did it, <laughs> to be honest. So we were supposed to only go a foot. That was up. yeah, that was that what was, we were thinking. That's what we were thinking. But once we were doing it and we saw that we could go higher, we decided to go a whole sixteen inches. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, crazy. But hey, more space. But that still gives us clearance <laughs> under most bridges in the U.S. So. Yeah, I think, I think we're it's only at, safe. I, I think we're only a little bit over eleven foot on our bus uh, with the roof race, and I think it's it it, it also gives us more room to play with, uh, like framing the bus and then putting insulation in. We will not be losing six inches, but we're estimating to lose around six inches at most. I, I think, think it'll be four. I think it'll be under four, but yeah, um, it'll or no, it actually. It probably will be four, yeah, a little bit over four, but we we just want to shoot for that six in case we need to, you know. Yep. The other thing is, I've seen um, some videos of people like cooking in their kitchen and then like bumping their head on the like a uh, like the or what's it called the count counter no the cabinet. The cabinet. <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, tired. It's late. Um, yeah, and their cabinets, and well, that and would then, be really uncomfortable to cook like that. Yeah, so. well, and then another you thing, comfortable. another thing you just brought to my mind is also the curvature of the bus. So mm-hmm. it's not one set height throughout the whole bus; it's actually a curve. So, like, even we, though we raced at six inches, the the edge of the bus is still like just seven foot high. After and then after we add the ceiling and everything, it's probably going to be even more uh, shorter on that side. So. Yeah, that is something. Yeah, those those people who are cooking and and are like this, I don't want to be those. Yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what materials did we need? Yeah, uh, that was kind of a tricky part. It's, like, it's, we're gonna miss some things here listing the stuff, but um, I mean, basic basic necessities are. Uh, Either either the uh, school erase uh, jacks that you f- make yourself out of some like gas pipe and sheet metal, and then uh, all threads with uh, uh, nuts uh, or yeah nuts on each side to um, to guide the progress along. Uh, if you don't use those, you, I've seen people use uh, farm jacks uh, or handyman jacks. I think is the other name for them on. Um, on like school school erase uh, roof race videos that is one of like the most needed things just so that if it does happen to fail and fall you don't die um but uh so we need we needed those uh we needed welding rods and a welder and a welding man someone who knows how to <laughs> weld um we we had my buddy Chris help us and he he was the one that welded everything um also 
cutting wheels and the angle grinder to cut with that is like I, I cannot stress how much you'll need that. Also, making sure everything is cut before you raise uh, the roof. That would also be really, really nice. Um, uh, no, but yeah, and then, um, I mean, just your, I mean, your tools that you would need around any school conversion, you know, um, or school bus conversion. Uh, you would need your, I don't know, uh, impact driver, your screwdriver, drill, whatever. Lots yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we I messed a lot of stuff, but lots of stuff. Uh, also, something to raise the roof with. Uh, we used uh, we used uh, my I have a friend who also helped us, and you'll see him in the video. His name's Kyle Kirshner, and he actually helped us. Uh, or his dad owns a tire shop, and they have those like uh, three ton uh, jacks for like the cars and like for the. Uh, for the semis and everything. So he brought uh, one of those and then Chris had another one. And then we used those in uh, two pieces of two or yeah, two by four, I think to raise the roof. Um, something that I do want to point out that if you do go with the car jacks and the pieces of wood is to have a brace across the top of the piece of wood to evenly support the pressure going on the roof. Cause if not, um, we, I don't know if this would happen or not, but we were afraid that it would cave in this way and then cut us in half or something. I don't know, but oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just, just think of physics and then be like, that's bad. <laughs> There's lots of reasons why it was not there. That's uh, one of them. Yeah. I feel like I'd just be nervous the whole time and freak out about every little thing. So I was not there. <laughs> uh, so prepping for um the roof race took probably about a whole week just because you have to make sure that you like the floor is clean like as in like no debris you don't want to trip over something as you're racing the roof which ours was very dirty as you'll see i think it took all day because of the pre-cutting of the hat channels and the front and the back of the bus i think we just had to sort of kind of we needed to put the school erase jacks in first before we actually like raised it and before we actually cut everything. And I would suggest also staggered cutting instead of just straight up cutting everything evenly. But yeah, I would say it took us probably like five days to get ready for it. But we do have full time jobs, so we were only able to work in the evening of weekdays and then Sunday or Saturday and Sunday. So, um, yeah, I think it, it, it could have taken, uh, less time, but I mean, we were busy pe people. <laughs> and I mean, none of you had done that before. So it's that's another like, thing. We it's like, we, there's a learning curve yeah. to every step. So, uh, we had no experience. Also, we didn't think it was going to work at first. We were very skeptical of racing a <laughs> roof on a school bus. Even though I've seen a lot of videos, I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> but we did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I would say, I mean, it, the, it took us around, five days to get ready for it and then one full day of race or actually i'd say half a day because we started i think the actual process not like we didn't start it till like two or three p.m and then i mean we, i was there till midnight i think so i would say a full day but where we sourced our materials from um so we used instead of i see i've seen people use hat channels to to so you you cut the hat channel you race it and then you put more hat channel and then weld it we didn't do that we did uh square tubing uh steel square tubing we did i believe 11 gauge because that's what the metal fab chop that we went to had uh we i just called around and price mat or like price checked basically and it didn't matter that I price checked because only one of them had a thick enough <laughs> gauge that i felt comfortable <laughs> with so we went with that one, I think, in, in, I mean, I think it's a local one, so I don't think it'll be anywhere else, but it was called, like, Summerlot Steel, and um, we we got the square tubing, and it fit perfectly inside of our hat channel, and then my friend Chris welded all around the, the well, 
around the head channel and tubing meeting on the outside, the inside, and, and just everywhere he could, up and down, and yeah. Yeah, it's definitely more uh, spacious. All right, going up. Going up. Okay. Going up to the sun. Day. If I do this again, I would put one in the middle. Yeah. So that way, and then take bring three floor jacks just to have control. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. So bump it. Done bumping. You need any curves? I really enjoyed watching it and not being there. Glad you guys had fun. Right? It was an easy job. Fun? It was <laughs> wiping my hands clean. That's how easy it was. Um, we're not putting the sheet metal in yet because we will be cleaning out that ceiling and the floor. And we know that the floor does have some rust on it and the ceiling has the insulation. We don't want to get suffocated inside of a school bus with steel metal all over it. So we're leaving that off until after we clean all that off and then we're going to put it in. I also think it'll make it easier to have like more sunlight coming in while we're trying to work on some of the inside stuff of the bus because we don't like we do have electricity to put light in but if you don't if you can use the sun that's that's a lot easier renewable energy baby <laughs> yeah. yeah um so yeah we're gonna work on taking the floor up and hopefully there's not a lot of rust under it <laughs> there probably will be our bus is from kentucky so we're a little worried but it'll be fine L okay. louisville baby we still haven't figured out where we want windows on the bus because we haven't really f figured out our um, our layout of the bus. We've been working on it, but it's really hard to kind of come up with a good layout. Um, that's I think we've made like eight different versions of how we want our bus to be, and 
It's hard to fit furniture in a small space. <laughs> okay. Don't judge us. It's hard to build a tiny house. Um, and once we figure that out, we'll know where the windows are going to go because it kind of has to work with the and layout. And we'll let you know. Yeah. We'll let you know. So I think that's it for this week. Catch you on the flippity side. Bye. We're at the bus. Let's see. They're still working on getting the roof raised. Well, it's up, but now they have to weld it and put the sheet metal on it. Does that look cool? <laughs> I think Selma's really confused. <laughs> so they're over there welding and we are hanging out with some chickens. I think she doesn't really know what to do about those. No, don't do it again. Should I do like this or should I do this? Or should I? <laughs> <laughs> I think last time you just. Catch you on the flippity side. <laughs> what? what? Not like that. You went like. Catch you on the flippity side. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Okay. You ready? Catch you on the flippity side. Bye.